Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today we've got performance numbers on the RTX 3080. The 3090 is an overclocking champ. Pricing on third party RTX 3000 cards and Big Navi's price tells us a lot. But first, if you aren't subscribed and you like the content here, please go ahead and do that and click the bell icon for notifications. I see that over 70% of my viewers aren't subscribed, so definitely make sure to do that so you can stay up with all things gaming hardware. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, we have more performance numbers on Nvidia's upcoming RTX 3080. The story was originally shared by Video Cards, who found numerous benchmarks on the upcoming GPU in CompuBench. These include both CUDA and OpenCL performance, and let's just say the RTX 3080 is once again proving itself to be a monster of a GPU. As you can see in both performance metrics, the RTX 3080 was on average 68% faster than the RTX 2080 Super. Yeah, that's the RTX 2080 Super, not the regular 2080. Not only that, but it was between 38 and 41% faster than the RTX 2080 Ti, which is flat unreal. Obviously, this isn't actual gaming performance or anything, but I think it gives us a good idea of just how much more powerful the new GPUs really are. Next up, we have even more evidence that the upcoming RTX 3000 cards are serious monsters. For one, during a recent video by EVGA, where they show off their new ICX3 tech, this little graphic pops up. And as you can see, it shows the RTX 3090 clocked at a very impressive 2.1 GHz. What's wild is that it also shows really low temps and voltage, making this almost seem like a regular boost clock or even idle. We know EVGA hasn't revealed clock speeds on a couple of their cards, so this could be one of them. Of course, it only shows up for a couple seconds in the video and it could have simply been for marketing purposes, but it definitely wouldn't be smart for EVGA to show it if it wasn't true. Next, we know Zotac has shown their RTX 3090 running at 1933 MHz, so this isn't all that unreasonable to expect. Of course, we know the RTX 2080 Ti can get some pretty amazing clocks as well, but remember that the 3090 has a ton more cores. Next up for today, I know this is a little older and I do apologize, things have been pretty hectic with the GPU launch, but I've got to cover this. For those who didn't know, right up until Nvidia announced Ampere, we saw numerous third party RTX 3000 listings from retailers, and they showed us some pretty wild prices. We're talking all the way up to $2700. Of course, there was always the chance that these were early pre-order prices, hoping to make some big money off early buyers. That and direct conversion isn't all that accurate. Well, Overclockers UK have actually listed numerous third-party cards with pricing, and WCCF Tech put them all in a nice list. Now, obviously this is Overclockers UK, so it's in pounds, which is a bit different from the US MSRP. But as you can see, the cards do start at that MSRP, which means you will actually get a chance to purchase third-party cards at a reasonable price. The 3080 and 3070 even drop below the Founders Edition pricing. With that said, the higher-end models do go up quite a bit, but nothing like we saw in those earlier listings. Of course, even higher-end models may end up surfacing to get way up there, but so far, things are certainly looking much better. Lastly for today, we have a huge story that not only gives us pricing details for AMD's upcoming big Navi GPU, but it also gives us a very real idea of what performance we can expect out of the upcoming RX 6000 GPU. The story originally comes from a tweet by Cortex, who apparently spoke with an AMD board partner on the upcoming card. Of course, because it's an anonymous source, this isn't guaranteed to be true, but it definitely makes sense. From the tweet, Cortex claims that AMD had originally planned to release a 16GB model at $599. Now, really quickly, he mentions an 8GB variant here, but he later tweeted that he got things mixed up with his source, and there isn't an 8GB model. So back to the first tweet, AMD planned on the 16GB model being $599, but after Nvidia announced Ampere, AMD is cutting that back by $50. So what does this mean? Well, for one, it certainly means AMD likely doesn't have anything to compete with the RTX 3090, which is definitely a bummer. But of course, the 3080 is ultimately Nvidia's flagship GPU. And as far as the 3080, I think this means one of two things. Either Big Navi can compete with the 3080, but AMD is seriously undercutting the price, or it fits somewhere between the RTX 3070 and 3080. 
Personally, I'm not sure. Your guess is as good as mine, but given the 3070 is a bit faster than the 2080 Ti, it likely is in that range. Of course, AMD could surprise us, but either way, clearly Nvidia surprised AMD. Having to cut the price beforehand must suck, but that's likely why AMD waited to begin with. Moving back to the tweet, he also mentions that board partners are receiving them this month, so a release in October seems plausible. Lastly, in the follow-up tweet, the source apparently confirms that AMD does not have plans for an HBM version. At the end of the day, it does suck that AMD may not be competing in the absolute high end, but it seems they do have something powerful coming. Hopefully their drivers are fully baked at launch. So while that does it for today, are you planning to hold out for Big Navi or are you ultimately planning to pick up one of Nvidia's newest cards? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.